Hello and welcome to Shalom Jerusalem. I'm Esther Allen. My guests today are Tom and Joanne Doyle. They are actually certified tour guides uh, with the State of Israel since 1999. And as they began that journey, their heart for the Israeli people grew, both Jew and Arab alike. And I know no other wonderful peacemakers like Tom and Joanne. So I'm really excited that they would be with us on this week's episode. Thank you for being here. Great to be here. Thank you, Esther. Yes, thank you, Esther. So great to see you. So good to see you too. You know, Tom and Joanne, I want to first start by talking about this, this newer ministry that you've launched called Uncharted. And I wondered if you could kind of give us a look at what are some of the things that you are doing in the Middle East? Yeah. So, you know, we talk about reaching the unreached and standing with the persecuted. So we have about 70 leaders nationally throughout the Middle East that are leading people to faith in Christ, discipling them, planting churches. But the thing that Uncharted adds is this. We know that when Muslims come to faith in Christ in the Middle East, they're going to be persecuted. So the fourth thing we do is prepare them for persecution because they're going to have an onslaught and it's usually going to come from their family. Mm. Joanne, I think that you launched a ministry, um, I'm not sure how many years ago, please do tell us, but it's called Not Forgotten. And I really love the work that you're doing for women in the Middle East. Could you tell us about Not Forgotten and the women that you get to meet with? Yes. Oh, gosh. Thank you, Esther. Yes, Not Forgotten. We started in about 2007, and our heart is to elevate women to their biblical place of honor that Christ has reserved for them. And in the, you know, the Middle East, in that male-dominated culture, women are suppressed, and they're often invisible and unseen and unheard. So our heart is to give them a voice and to meet with those women that have been forgotten and really both Jew and Muslim and allow them to see how much Jesus loves them and has a hope and a plan for their future. Mm. Joanne, just along that line, I want to ask you, how do you think Jesus sees women? Mm. Oh, wow. wow, that is a huge question with a beautiful answer that we see, of course, written throughout the pages of scripture. Um, Jesus sees women, of course, as equal to men, equal in essence, differing in roles. But I believe Jesus also sees women as the spiritual influencers or the spiritual gatekeepers of their family and of their world. Um, you know, we see him trailing, we see the trail of women throughout the scripture, the women that provided for Jesus, the ones that were remained with him at the cross, and then the ones that discovered him as alive yeah. over the disciples who were hiding in fear. So God truly does elevate women. And just as women back in Jesus day ran back to the men and told them that he was alive, he continues to do that today. Right. Often Jesus is first revealed to the woman in the family, and she brings that good news back to the men and the children in her life. So God sees women as very special. What an important message that is really needed for women all over, not just the Middle East. Uh, Tom, you know, I, I really appreciate your heart and love for Israel, your knowledge of Israel and the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Um, but one thing that really impacted me when we went to Israel together is your love for the Palestinian people and firsthand experience that God is working among the Palestinian people. Could you give us an example of this? Wow. And you know, Esther, it's funny because I think in the Middle East, it tends to be you work for a Jewish ministry, you work for a ministry that reaches out to Muslims. A lot of times though, those don't mix too much. And we would get people telling us, well, you can't work with both groups, you know, and we would just say, you know what? Jesus loves them both. His heart's big enough to love them both. And so we're thankful to get to work with Jews and Palestinians. Uh, you know, we have a friend that lived in the Gaza Strip. And do you know, Esther, he said this. He, when he came to faith in Christ, he said, I want to be a full disciple. I said, a full disciple, Muhammad. What do you mean about like that? What are you talking about? And he said, you know, I think some Christians just kind of pick and choose what they want to obey. But I want to obey everything that Jesus said. And the first one that hit me hard was love your enemy. And my enemy was right across the fence. They were mm -hmm. called Israel and I hated them. And so I asked God to forgive me for the hatred because as a believer, I'm not supposed to have that. Forgive me. And I thought maybe a tolerance would kind of set in. Okay, the Jews are all right. I don't want to kill them anymore. But it ended up that God just replaced that with a love mm -hmm. for them. So it was a supernatural hatred, but then it was a supernatural love that overcame him. And Esther, it's so amazing. He has the Shema tattooed on his arm. 
His name's Mohammed. In Hebrew. <laughs> in Hebrew. He lives in the West Bank. I mean, we tell him, don't wear a muscle shirt, please, you know, be careful. But he said, this is my way to share with Orthodox Jews and tell them, hey, I used to hate you. I wanted to kill you. But Jesus came into my life. He's Jewish, you know, and gave me a love for you. And I concur with what you say. I want to love the Lord, my God, with all my heart, soul, and strength, just like you do. You know, Tom and Joanne, I know that you were some of the founding members for the Alliance for the Peace of Jerusalem. I just want to read to you one of our statements and have you comment on it, because I want our viewers to hear why peacemaking is such an important characteristic of disciples of Christ. It says that we affirm that Jesus says, blessed are the peacemakers, and thus the church should faithfully pray and humbly work towards peace, security, justice, and reconciliation between Israel for her Arab neighbors and encourage a culture of love, respect, and unity among followers of Jesus and the Messiah in the Holy Land. Could you speak to this reconciliation and this peacemaking? Is it possible? Is it happening? And how can we be involved with that? Yeah, I think the only way we've ever seen that come close, Esther, is when both sides embrace Jesus okay. as Savior and, and give up their rights and their concerns and all their political interests and love their brothers and sisters on the other side. The body of Christ is one. But Jesus knew that we were going to be able to split really well. And he said, make them one, make them one on the last night of his earthly life. And so seeing Jews and Palestinians that love each other, that would, dare we say, die mm -hmm. for each other. That is a message that the world needs to hear. That's right. You know, Esther, too, I would say we've got, we can't forget that one of the pieces of the armor of God that he's given us is the gospel shoes of peace. And so as Tom said, it's through the gospel that peace comes. We can't manufacture it in ourselves. Truly only yeah. Jesus can birth that in us. It's one of the fruit of the spirit that is part of having the Holy Spirit living in us and walking um, as he would guide us. I want to ask you, because you really are on the ground there, you have a, a great perspective and you're involved. <laughs> you're involved with ministry. I want to ask um, about the relationship that you see between the Jewish Israeli and the Palestinian church. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I think it's multifaceted. I think that there are true peacemakers that are just trying to make a difference come together. I think there are some that, that want peace, but, but yet are not willing to give in. They have a view. Mm -hmm. uh, I see this all the time and kind of, I can't accept you unless you embrace 100% of my view. It's a little bit dangerous. We know how it is in America. We got Christians from all political spectrums, all mm -hmm. kinds of things. Most important thing is how we come to to Jesus and come together in faith. So we won't solve all those difficulties, all those political issues, all the land issues, but as brothers and sisters in Christ, there's only one option. It's to be united in Christ. Right. What would you tell believers in America? You know, if you were to give us advice about becoming peacemakers and caring about Israel and her neighbors, one of the first things I would say is we got to peel back all the cultural layers and remember all of us, every single one of us is, is created in the image of Christ, in the image of God, where his image bears, right? So the biggest thing we need to do is connect, you know, internally. And the second thing I think that is so important, a key to unlock us, you know, step us into freedom is forgiveness. It is so important to forgive one another and um, not allow the, our differences to come between us. But again, Esther, it goes back to all of this is centered in Christ. Yeah. We can't manufacture it in ourselves. Um, it happens in Jesus. And then the last thing I'd say is prayer. Praying for those, as Jesus said, pray for those who persecute you. You pray for your enemy and all of a sudden his love begins um, forming in our hearts. Boy, that's so you, true. Um, yeah, and I think... You know, I was just in Proverbs today. I do a daily Bible text, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. We're not supposed to lean on our understanding. We're supposed to lean on God. Social media is an example of leaning on our own understanding. And I'm broadcasting it to the whole world, right? And so we get these thoughts, and it's divisive in that. We have one obligation. It's to follow the Lord and follow what he's laid out in Scripture and to avoid those things. We're here not to break people. We're here to build them up. And so we need to just, our understanding needs to come from God and not the latest meme or whatever on social media. 
You know, Tom, what do you see for the future of Israel in regards to the body of Christ? Are things going to be getting better or are things going to be getting worse? Well, you know, I think as far as the pressure, I think it's going to get worse. Even though there is a peace agreement, and we thank God for that, um, we know that there are radical groups that are gunning for Israel. I mean, we see them. We're in the area where there's ISIS, Hezbollah, Hamas. We see them. They're not giving up because some peace treaty has been signed. Far from it. And so we know there's danger around the next curve. But as far as the body of Christ coming together, we've seen the Jewish church grow when we have some friends, Esther, that you know in Israel that remember when there was less than 20 yeah. believers, Jewish believers, and now 20,000, 30,000, I don't know how many they're saying now, but the numbers mm -hmm. are rising. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is calling his church uh, 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 and Jews are responding to the gospel. We want to see them respond as much fast as Muslims are because they're having dreams and visions and everything, but it's happening. And so it's an exciting time I'm so thankful that we're privileged to live in this generation. Could you tell us how we can pray for the peace of Jerusalem? That's a, that's a beautiful quote from the Psalms. I love that, Esther. Thank you. What a compliment. First of all, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. So as we are praying for the peace of Jerusalem, for the people that live in that land, our prayer is that they will find Jesus as Messiah because he is the one that will bring peace into their hearts. And then, of course, peace reigns in the land. Again, as we've said many times, as um, Jesus in one person and Jesus in the other come together, not only in forgiveness and friendship, but reconciliation. Right. So it all goes back to finding Jesus as Messiah, as Savior, praying that. Um, I have a great little daily prayer text I get that says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And every day it has a different scripture to pray for the people of the land. And so that's another way that I intentionally don't forget to pray that Jesus will come into the people of the land of Israel. That's beautiful to know that God is always working. You know, even if we can't be there physically, we can pray and God is at work. Tom, I wanna ask you, you know, you are working in a region that believes in a lot of prophets, the prophet Muhammad, people will say Jesus was a prophet. Could you explain to me a difference between Jesus and Muhammad? Well, you know, the, the difference, and when we're sharing the gospel with Muslims, we try to honor them and hear their story. But if they do want to talk about Jesus and Muhammad, I mean, obviously there's no comparison. The Quran looks back, there's nothing predictive. There was no miracles from, from Muhammad whatsoever. So there's a major difference. And I think Esther, just that Jesus is coming to Muslims in dreams and visions is almost enough for them to push over the other side. Okay, he is way different from Muhammad because they don't have that with Muhammad. The dreams that they have oftentimes are scary nightmare types where there was fear. Mm -hmm. But then Muslims are having dreams about Jesus and saying, I never felt so safe with anyone in my life. I felt comforted. I felt like a father was talking to me. So in Jesus' life and in, in his treatment of people today, there's such a vast difference. And I think Muslims are seeing that mm -hmm. and warming up in some of the worst places you can imagine to following Jesus. And we're excited about that. Tom and Joanne, I wanna ask you, can anyone be a follower of Jesus? You know, no matter their background, uh, their story, their history, where they live, can anyone follow Jesus? Absolutely. Jesus said, to the thief on the cross right next to him as he's dying a criminal's death. When he confessed, Jesus, will you That's save right. me? Yes, I will see you today in paradise. There is hope for anyone and everyone. He came that none should perish apart from him. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, getting back to that, the thief on the cross, his profession of faith actually is to the guy on the other That's side true. of Jesus. He says, why are you talking to him like that? He doesn't deserve to die. We do. And Jesus took that confession of faith. He realized that he was sinless. And he took that confession of say, faith and said, today you'll be with me in paradise. Mm -hmm. It's so simple. It's so easy. It's so needless for people to spend mm -hmm. eternity apart from Christ, no mm -hmm. matter if they come from a Jewish background, Muslim background, or any other ethnic background mm -hmm. around the world. Hey, I want to thank you both for um, putting action where your faith is, putting works where your faith is. It is so evident you are wonderful peacemakers. Thank you for teaching us all 
And for you viewers, if you want to follow Tom and Joanne's work, please support them at Uncharted Ministries.